Welcome to The Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Maria Valletta, and we're here at the Morris Black Theater at the PBS 39 Studios in Bethlehem. Joining us in the kitchen today is Chef James Barrett of the Metropolitan Bakery, my favorite bakery in Philadelphia. Welcome. Thanks for being here again. You're regular on the show. I love it. I love to be here. Thank you for uh, having me, Maria. And I heard you're going to make today's show a whole lot sweeter. I hope so, yes. So we're going to travel to France and we're going to make uh, two sweets that I, when I hear France, I think of automatically. One is chocolate mousse mm -hmm. and one is a madeleine. Oh, and we're yes. just doing a little twist on each of them. So we need to get busy because um, they're both a, a little involved. We have a lot to do. So I have in here some, uh, some unsweetened chocolate and I'm going to place that over double boiler and I'm going to add some uh, sweet unsalted butter. So we're going to allow the uh, unsweetened chocolate and butter to, to start melting. As soon as it's melted, we're going to remove it and let it cool slightly. Okay. While that is uh, melting, we are going to cook our egg yolks, right? So I'm going to, uh, I, I don't, I'm a little lazy, so I don't really like to um, do many dishes. <laughs> so when I can avoid it, I certainly will. So lazy I'm, in the kitchen, I'm all about that. You know, so I'm gonna take some egg yolks and I'm going to take uh, me the sugar. Here. Okay, and then here I have um, very strong coffee. I'm going to take about half of that amount. Coffee? Coffee, For yes. For a second there, I thought it was vanilla or <laughs> some sort of tea. That's coffee. I'm going to place it over this other double boiler. Okay. And so now I'm going to whisk, right? And I'm going to whisk vigorously. And I'm going to whisk these. One, I want to cook the egg yolks. And then I am going to look for um, foam and uh, just a slight ribbon, but not too much. And I'm going to cook the egg yolks to between 158 degrees and 162. So this is where you have to really be careful that your stirring fast enough so it doesn't curdle up. Exactly, and you want a rolling, uh, a rolling uh, water boil. So if you could grab my, my gun thermometer here. Oh. So I just want to take a quick take temp. Take a radar? Yep. So this is uh, an instant read uh, gun thermometer I'm going to look. And so we're just about there. I'm so looking what for, temperature was I'm reading looking right for now? 158 uh, to 162. Okay. And we're just about there. We're just about at 140. So Maria, now we're going to take the, uh, the temperature on our whipping uh, egg yolks. And you can see that we're just at uh, 160 degrees, which is perfect. Yep. Okay? So I'm going to set the thermometer down. We're going to take this uh, bowl. I'm going to come around you. And I'm going to place this on my stand mixer. Chuck, hi, good hi. to see you. Nice Welcome to, see to the you. show. Thank James, you very much. do you know Chuck Buxbaum? Hello Chuck, nice to see you. He nice is to see the you. director of operations for Morris Black Designs and the senior designer. So tell me about this beautiful studio that you designed and created. Well, thank you very much. Um, really the inspiration for it was when Stephen Horn, the producer of the show, first came to see me, we sat down and we talked about the things that he really needed to have in the set. Um, he told me he wanted two sinks, a 48-inch range, Got it. two wall ovens, and an 18-foot-long island. Well, you need a lot of workspace. That's the biggest island I've ever seen, 18-foot long. So, you know, really seemed like something to me. So what I did was I went back to my office, and the first thing I did was watch some of the show, a few of the old episodes to see how they really do it, and how the shooting and how it works, and then I understood. We really need something this long. So once I got the concept of what he was doing and how he worked, you know, we wanted to put together something that was going to be a contemporary European, you know, something fresh and very sleek looking yes. for them to work very in. Very sleek and very sexy. The red, I love it. I love it. It really pops. It, it really, really does pop. pops. And it does really kind of remind you of a bistro. So it has that kind of yes, a look to it. So that's exactly it, what it feels like. Yeah, that was really the inspiration for the, for the set. Well, it, it does do wonders for our studio. We are so thankful. And I love that, you know, you have custom designers like you on staff that can create that vision so that you can bring that into your own home. If, if I was building a home right now, I would absolutely be on your site. I'd be at morrisblack.com. Yes. And I would be looking at the cabinetry I can choose. You know, you got oak, you have maple, we could do red. What else? We could do white. We can do pretty much anything. Um, we have a lot of designers and we really try to make sure that we're sculpting the kitchen for your needs and for your desires so we can handle pretty much any kind of design you like, traditional, country, contemporary. This contemporary kitchen was built in our own um, fabrication plant, so we built this ourselves as well. So we also have the capability to do that, to build highly customized work, exactly what you're looking for. Well, for a company that's been in business for 100 years, that's a company you know you can trust. Yes, sir. We're going to see you for the tasting a little bit later, Chuck. That's great. Thank you. See Thank you soon. You.
Stay tuned for more from the Mars Black Theater. We're back with more from the Mars Black Theater. How's it going here, Chef? Great, Maria. So um, uh, what I've done now is I've zested uh, the zest of one orange. Yep. I'm going to add that into our whipping egg yolks and sugar. Now I'm going to turn it on high. So the only thing that you added was the sugar? Exactly. Okay. Okay. So we're going to take oh. that chocolate off. Be careful, it's very hot. Yeah, this is nice and yep. melted. I'll let you do that. Okay. It looks like a dangerous job. Yes. I've never Quite been good hot. at pastry. I've kind of been more at savory and the you savory. Can, Although that's really big for you right now with the expanded cafe. The exactly. savory items. Exactly. You know, 20 years ago when, we, when uh, my partner Wendy Bourne and I opened up Metropolitan Bakery, our customers from day one were asking for a place to sit down so that they could enjoy our sweets, enjoy our bread. Um, so finally, 20 years later, we got to it. So we have a lovely cafe, sit down, we do great uh, press sandwiches, salads. Chicken pot pie I had. We, have, we do a chicken that pot pie, so yes. That was so good. Oh, really I'm so glad good. you enjoyed it. Absolutely. Great. So um, to the uh, the chocolate, I'm going to add the other half of the coffee. Ah, I'm going to, I didn't take that away from you. Okay. <laughs> now, just to bump up the orange flavor, I'm going to add one of my favorite liquors. Uh, Grand Marnier. You got I it. Knew. Exactly, right? I can right? smell it from Can here. you smell that? Isn't that divine? Oh, it oh. is divine. Your it orange is. and chocolate is, is uh, such a wonderful combination. It okay? really is. So now I'm going to uh, let that sit. Okay. Now I'm going to add a pinch of salt. Okay, so you can see that our egg yolks are ready. They're cool to room temperature. Now we're going to pop it off. And so you can see what I'm looking for. See how that falls, the, the egg yolks yeah, fall the into themselves. Here because, um, so our viewers can see as well. So you can see how the egg yolks slowly fall into themselves and then they form what we call a ribbon and then it will slowly disappear and become smooth again. Kind of reminds me of doing like the drizzle when you're making sandcastles as a kid. With yes, <laughs> it is. That's where you I can eat. see why pastry can be fun. Exactly. We have our, our uh, melted uh, chocolate butter our flavorings, coffee and Grand Marnier. Uh, we have our whipped uh, egg yolks with sugar. Now we need to lighten the mousse. Mm. Uh, instead of using whipped cream, we're going to use only uh, whipped egg whites, or as we call it, meringue. Yes. And I'm gonna put this on high, by the okay. way. We wanna get nice and fluffy. As soon as I uh, see some, some foaming action, and what we call a soft peak, I'm going to start raining in sugar little by little. Okay. And that is going to help lift the meringue, trap the air into those little air bubbles, and it'll become white and frothy. Okay. <laughs> so the first time I made chocolate mousse, I was uh, about 11, 12 years old, and I was watching TV, and I watched somebody make chocolate mousse. Got some money, went down to the corner store. So you can see I'm just foaming now. I'm going to yeah. very slowly start uh, folding in some sugar. Came home with all the ingredients, and I made chocolate mousse for the first time. You and went to work. I went to work, right? And it was a little disastrous. You know, there was, uh, not for me, the mousse was excellent, <laughs> but the kitchen was a mess. And I realized that then I was a baker and a chef and not a cleaner. So you see, we're, uh, the egg whites are still nice and shiny. Yeah. I'm adding the sugar in little by little. They've uh, Super incorporated. Fluffy. We want it to be uh, nice and fluffy and soft, but not over mixed. If it's overmixed, the egg whites become dry, and that'll have an adverse reaction. Okay, so you can see it holds a soft peak; it just yeah. limps over. Okay, that's so what that's they mean that. by a soft peak. By a soft peak. When you see that in books, which instead I'm sure of standing up straight, it'll just fall over slightly. Oh, okay. okay? That's a okay. good tip to know. Okay, Marie. So now we have all of our components. Okay, so we have our chocolate. I'm going to mix this. If you would start folding that in, you can turn the bowl with your left hand as you fold in with your spatula on the right. Oh now goodness. I'm going to start giving you some egg whites. Okay. And if I could, I, could I show you one thing? Yes, Th give me any tip okay. you can. So I want to maintain the volume of the, the meringue, but this yes. is going to lighten it. So I turn the bowl with my left and I scrape the spatula okay, so up the side. The mm -hmm. I scrape the spatula towards me, up the side and over through the center. And I keep turning and turning and turning. I'm going to do a little individual uh, presentation. I have these uh, Lovely glass jars, and this is how I serve it in my cafe. Ooh, what is that? This is a beautiful little cafe bowl with chocolate cookie, cookie crumbs. crumbs. Mm -hmm. Yes, chocolate wafers. I ground them with a little bit of melted butter. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I have a pastry bag. Okay. And just take a little bit of the, of the chocolate mousse. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to pipe it in. Okay. The mousse, you can see the beautiful, lovely, light texture. If you wanted to pipe this, then just put it into your bag. So the hard part's done mm -hmm. here. We're just exactly. putting it together. Now we're just going to pipe it right into the jar. 
And you could use any shape jar you can, here. Which you is can really use fine. a wine glass. And mm. I always leave a little room, okay, because I want to top it. You can either mm -hmm. top it with uh, some whipped cream uh, or you can drizzle with uh, caramel. So in this case, I'm going to drizzle with just a little bit of caramel. I love and the caramel, caramel. Uh, because the mousse is dense enough, is going to just ooze its way into a beautiful thin layer over the mousse. I'm going to tighten up the jar. All these, all these, uh, for, you know, I wanted to do this whole for mm -hmm. presentation for a party of, you know, eight or ten or whatever. Chill them until you're ready to serve, and then each guest gets their only lo lovely little jar. That's adorable. Should I put it in the fridge? Please. Stay tuned for more with Chef James Barrett. We're back with more from the Mars Black Theater. We are going to now make my other favorite French sweet, and that is Madeleine. Brown butter, we're going to take a vanilla bean, we're going to melt this, and then we're going to let it brown. That's a lot of butter. Oh, but it disappears to nothing. You'll see. And we're making, this will make, you know, 48 little Madeleine cookies, okay? So we're going to let that, uh, set that off to the side, let it melt. As it melts, the vanilla bean will infuse the flavor into the butter, and then uh, we'll let it cool. So I have one done for us right here. So now for the Madeleine, we're going to start with uh, eight eggs. We're going to add our sugar, which is about one and three quarter cups. Now, again, I'm going to use that same foamy method. Okay. And we're going to place this over a bowl of simmering water. And again, we want to whip. Now this time, we have whites involved. So we really need to keep it moving um, because the egg whites will coagulate uh, at a lower temperature than the egg yolks. Ah, and so, then so it's you'll even have, trickier. You have to really is. keep an eye on we it. We don't here. want little little bits of white cooked albumin, you know, in... No, you need it to be very smooth. Very smooth, light and fluffy. And then as soon as we're there, we're going to put this on, back onto the sand mixer and we're going to whip it on high until it gets light and fluffy and very voluminous. Okay. Okay, and so we're there. Should I turn off the boiling water? Please, yes. So I'll pop this back onto the stand mixer, and now we're going to whip this in high. So you see, both both of these preparations use this foaming method, and uh, like I said, it's used for so many preparations. Mm -hmm. um, if you're just doing egg whites, uh, egg whites and sugar, you're going to whip them to volumous. That is for a Swiss meringue. Um, again, for, for this method. So if you master that, uh, that technique of cooking egg yolks with sugar or whole eggs with sugar, you can do lots of, you know, it has many applications, okay? So you can, then you can create most of the recipes that are in your new book, right? Exactly, the 20, 20 recipes for commemorating 20 years. That's incredible. I mean, to have a business for 20 years, especially in the food industry, mm -hmm. that's it's milestones, that's huge. And yes. You know, you've been a favorite. I mean, how many restaurants use your breads? But, you know, to, to talk about 20 recipes that you've done, I mean, you had a hand select these, right? I did. So th th this is a wonderful cookbook that uh, um, Wendy and I uh, uh, self-published, uh, and it is, contains 20 recipes. Um, and some Coconut of the recipes... layer cake. That's one of the customer's favorites. So we, what we try to do, it, this is a gift to our customers. So we try to include recipes uh, that our customers wanted, and we're always asking the recipes for. There's your top That's crust chicken I pie. Have. So, so you notice I call it instead of calling Popeye, I call it top crust chicken pie. Oh yes. It sounds more polite. It really does, and it sounds yeah. more pastry. More pastry, exactly. Perfect. Um, and ah. uh, tells you how to make homemade cream cheese. Um, so it's a wonderful collection of uh, our favorite recipes, our customers' favorite recipes, and the two recipes that I'm doing for today, unfortunately were cut. They just didn't make it to the final book. But that's okay, because we'll have the recipes on the chef's kitchen. That's why I'm doing it for you today. Fantastic. Okay, great. So our eggs should be ready. So you can see, just in that short time, uh, just how voluminous they become. Really, yeah. They're, they're like expanded. Exactly. You can see uh, they've probably almost tripled in volume, right, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And we if have just a very slow rhythm. If you started whipping that on the stove right now, it would go everywhere. It, it would. Because there's so much. <laughs> exactly. So we have our melted, cooled butter. This becomes this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add uh, lots of uh, fresh lemon zest. And I'm assuming you're using unsalted butter? Absolutely. Okay. Most pastry chefs would mm. prefer that. How are you enjoying cooking at a... Uh, in the Morris Black Design Studio kitchen. This kitchen is so amazing. It's fabulous. Isn't it? Everything Isn't it? is, everything is uh, at, at my reach. It is very friendly for um, a professional chef. 
for the home cook yes. and baker. You know, for, for baking, we have uh, slightly different needs, but this uh, set and this design works very well. As you can see, we're, do we're getting a lot done. We are. So we have plenty of room. The burners are, are very strong and powerful and fabulous. So we're alternating between our browned butter, which is cooled, mm -hmm. and our flour mixture. What kind of flour are you using? This is an all-purpose flour. You can throw this all oh, in. Yep, yeah, absolutely. You're good. Thank you. Mm. It's deflated just so slightly, and that's what you want. Um, if it's too light and fluffy, then as you're filling your madeleine, they will kind of flatten out, and they will rise, and they will drop in the oven. So you want to fold and make sure that all the flour is mixed in very well, and, and the butter is all fully incorporated. Okay. Yeah, you don't want any pockets of uh, flour. Exactly. Also, when you cut the madeleine, if you see big air pockets, that means your folding was not done completely. There's our completed batter, so you can see the flecks of lemon zest, the flecks of brown butter, and some of the vanilla bean uh, mm -hmm. from, from the vanilla pot. Stay tuned for more from the Mars Black Theater. We're back with more from the Mars Black Theater. This is kind of an industrial size. I mean, this, this makes 24 Madeleine, but they have uh, single strips, uh, or you can have uh, double strips, okay? Hey, the more the merrier. If you're gonna go through that, to exactly. put it all together, why not make a bunch? So here's a little a, a tip for you. When, I like tips. when you're alone and you have to fill a pastry bag uh, to use to fill something, to just fold the the, ah. the bottom corner up, take a, a clip, and just clip it in place, and like that'll that. hold it so it doesn't go running out. And everybody has those around mm -hmm. their house. This is quite a runny batter, so you don't want to do that. Okay. So. Do you want me to just pour it in, or do you like to scoop uh, it? You can pour it in if you like. I kind of like to to scoop it in little by little. Uh, try not to make. Too, um, much, of too much of a mess, you know. <laughs> but that's why you fold it all the way down around your hand. Yeah. So that way it's not going to get on your hand. It'll just get onto the side of the pastry bag. Okay. So we're going to pretend that this is full. I don't like to overfill my bag. I twist it slightly, and I'm going to hold it up because it will start to pour out as soon okay. as I take the clip off. Okay. So now we're going to fill up our, our madeleine. Okay. So I bring it right to the edge, and then just one by one, I just fill them up. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do like a two count. One, two. Two. One, two. Wouldn't you try one? It's like bartending. They, you know, an ounce is one, two, three, four. Exactly. So I get the counting thing. Okay. Okay. So you're going to squeeze lightly with your right hand. Okay. Perfect. Tilt it up and then go oh. to your next. <laughs> I got it. Excellent. And so you want to try and fill them up just below the lip of each of the madeleine. Okay. So once you once mm. you um, have finished this, uh, you could, again, if you had to fill it back up, just put your clip back on the bag. Refill. And set it aside. If you don't have a clip, uh, sometimes I'll use a tall, thin jar. Okay. Glass jar. Okay. So we'll set that aside. And now we're going to place these into the oven if it was full. And I'm going to bring a towel with me because I have another pan of those which are baked for you. Baked and ready to go. Baked and ready to go. So this is a, a favorite, um, it's almost like a cookie, but it's like a, exactly. a pound cookie of some sort, right? It, it's, it's a very, it's like a sponge cake. A sponge cake. And Marie, I forgot to tell you one very important thing. Yes. Before you fill your madeleine, you want to just uh, spray ah, spray the pan so with a nonstick spray. Out. So yeah. they'll come out easily, okay? So these have been sprayed before. This was, this I, I definitely sprayed, okay? <laughs> and so you can just do, you know, Right on your counter, you can put uh, you know some parchment paper down if you prefer, you know whatever action you like. But you just want to tilt them out immediately from the oven. If they sit, then the tendons, they'll have a tendency to stick. So what are we going to okay? tilt them onto? So we're, we're just going to put them right onto my right onto my counter, and I'm just going to go whoosh. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Sometimes they're going around. I That's fine. Uh, okay. If you wanted to, you could just uh, lift them up, you know, with a knife. Yep. But I want to ensure that uh, look how that pretty they, they are. Out. If you have a, um, a, a, a cooling rack, mm -hmm. uh, you can turn them out onto that. Okay. Um, but I do like the action of just turning them out immediately because I'd have no time uh, to let them sit in that pan because they will stick. So if you want, we can go over and we can uh, taste some vanilla madeleine and I can give you some, some chocolate mousse to, to taste. Oh, look, and Chuck is back for the most important part. This is the part I definitely wouldn't miss. <laughs> today's episode here on The Chef's Kitchen, the tasting. Yes. Spoons, please. Great. Just there's a little bit of powdered sugar. Now they're complete. And then we have our chocolate mousse. And I topped it with a little bit of whipped cream and those same crumbs. Would you like some caramel? Just a little drip would okay. be fabulous. A little Thank bit you. more. Look at that. All right, that's yours. Thank you. Passing them down. That's mine. 
taste the moose. There you go. All right, I'm gonna dig into the moose first. Enjoy. Yes. All right, here we go. All together now. Okay. Mm. Wow. Mmm. That's mm. wonderful. Can you taste the Grand Marnier in there? Mm. You really can. That is fantastic. And the coffee just highlights the, the <sighs> intense chocolate. And it's so light. It's so, so light. light, Chef. Mm. All right. It has that just a little, little sponginess. Mmm. 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 This is so mm. good. Mm. Warm out of the oven. So Unbelievable. Are you, are you transformed? Mmm. Yes. That's I don't, terrific. I'll always let you do the baking. Mm. Thank you, Chef James Barrett, for joining us on The Chef's Kitchen. Thank you, Chuck, Thank you for, for making me. this kitchen happen. Thank you very much. Morris Black Designs, fabulous Metropolitan Bakery. Come back soon. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be Thank here. Thank you.